juncture for you to partake in a cup of tea. I sincerely hope you gain immense pleasure from your brew. Thankfully, back to working on Victoria. If you remember, I've scanned in using a photogrammetry the Kraken that goes on the front of a pair of steampunk goggles and fiddled around, add suckers and all the rest of it. Got it all ready to print, spent 330 of your best squids on a graphics processing unit and the first print with the lovely metallic copper fibre came out like that. I stopped the print because I realised that I put a bit of blue tack on at one stage to try and help it but it's rubbish. None of the suckers printed. Well, a couple of them did. Here's version 2. Same thing. Changed it a little bit. Tried changing the settings. Here's version 3. And there's one of the beautiful suckers. Oh, how wonderful. Version 4, which I left a little bit longer having put all sorts of attachments to try and support the uh, suckers and or tentacles so I've given up. I'll mull over it. I'll put it on the back burner, but not so it withers on the vine. To use managerial speak. What I'm doing though, as you can probably hear in the background with the 3D printer going, is I've nearly run out of these um, Kraken gauge kits, the moving ones. So I've started printing some more bases, which I know print properly. What's this? Another advert? I think you might be right. I'm printing a load more parts, components, for the Kraken Animated Proximity Gauge Kit. And here's a completed one. Here's one I completed earlier. Kit comes with everything you need. It will either come with a battery pack or you can, I'll provide it with a circuit that allows you to run it off anything from 4.5 to 12 volts. You can paint it and decorate it how you want or I sell them ready made. It's all terribly, terribly exciting. What I think of it, another really, hopefully, potentially useful top tip. I've been making more and more of these gauges, the decorative gauges, um, as people keep buying them, which is lovely. Um, what I found was that they weren't gluing properly onto photographic paper. The lenses weren't. They glue on, but then you'd see Titchy little shiny silver bits, a sort of pattern, never used to happen. And I have tried everything. I've tried everything from storing the super glue in the fridge to using the other side of the paper to cleaning the lenses to this to that, you name it. I've probably tried it over the last few days and it started to do my head in. You know, you stick a load of these on, beautifully looking fabulous, all lined up, and then you come back an hour or two later. And there's all little speckles, but I have the solution. I have worked it out and I would like to share it with you. The solution is my photographic paper was too old. And I think something on the surface treatment had started a chemical reaction, which meant that the glue reacted with something on the surface. I, I, like I said, I've tried everything. That's all I can think of. So I went ahead and bought a new pack of good quality Epson matte photographic paper and it works. I can't tell you how exciting that is because I have been tearing what little remains of my hair out over the last few days, week or whatever, just repeatedly trying to stick these down to fulfil orders and then having to redo it again and again until by luck I get one that actually looks okay. I've got such high standards of quality control that I will not let products out that I am not 100% happy with. So I am thrilled. There you go. As always, I always forget my lovely range of gauges and the Kraken Animated Gauge Kit and the Chronographs and the Nepnet Throwable Kitchen Timer Steampunk Kit are all available on my website and my Etsy shop. I will put the links in the description. Few are remembered. Thanks very much. Let's get on with Lech. Let's get on with Victoria. There she is in all her glory. Let's get try and get a mouth opening and closing. Well, I connected this up to the oscilloscope so I could see what's going on, and it doesn't make any sense at all. The output of this headphone output, we can hear it on headphones. 
so I assume it's one of these modern fangled gadgets what I've done just to check because I wondered whether the oscilloscope being so old I bought it years ago from Maplin's oh good times whether the capacitors had failed and things so I connected it up to a lovely signal generator that I got out of a skip and it works it still works I can turn the frequency up and all the rest of it down all everything else so I know the oscilloscope works so it's got to be because this Roland um, voice recorder outputs are some one of the clever pulse width modulation systems that I suffered when I started working on um, the Is It Time for Tea machine with Florence. So I've got my laptop and I'm going to try the same thing outputting audio from that and just hoping that it doesn't do anything too clever that it's the old-fashioned sort of audio output. Just to demonstrate this, I'll show you what I mean. I'll press play. And there's an audio file and it's just nuts. It's all over the place and this is the same settings as to display uh, an audio output from the frequency generator and it's just it just doesn't do it random zero track one here's an audio random file random zero track I will one plug random the zero track one audio random output zero track one into that oh look at that it's a proper audio file proper audio output I can speed it up slow it down that is a proper old-fashioned audio file so I have to use this then but the great thing is now I have an audio signal a varying voltage that I can actually see is audio so now I can feed that into my circuit and see what it does so I reckon that's the envelope because it waits until each little bit of speech is passed and then drops down, starts up again. A little bit of an issue here. When I switch the mouth on and off at 5 volts, because I wanted to try it with the actual mouth, and see. But if I do it quickly, it takes it it doesn't have time to open. I actually had to put a little weight underneath mode of blue tack to get it to open. I think this is much lighter than the original for some reason. Oh, well, that's right, it pushes back so the jaw hinge is open. So, sorry, so the jaw hinge is closed. So the mouth is closed all the time. Then, when you switch it on, it pulls this in, lets the mouth drop open, let go. The little spring here pushes it back. Now, I think the problem is that, um, unlike this one where it's captive. If you have watched a previous video, you know that I took off all this and this was free to sit in and out, slide in and out, which made it much quieter because you didn't get the, the clunk and bits and pieces anyway. So I think what I've done is there's too much gap here. This plunger is too far out, so that when you switch the magnet on it takes far longer for the um, plunger to move in. So I think I'm going to move it all back. Also it means the spring is too weak so it doesn't push the mouth back closed. This is why it's so important to be able to design something or to design something so you can get it to part easily. So one screw, well loosening that one and I've managed to slide the hex bar out of the neck bearings and then the head comes off which is great. And then loosen these two, well undo these two screws to get the mouth off because I thought I could push out the solenoid support but I can't because this back bit gets in the way that bit, the pushing bit so then we can get the mouth out carefully not damaging her lipstick that's that bit 
And then, here, here's the bit we want. This bit, there we are. I'm also going to replace this because if you remember that little bit of felt there means that as her mouth shuts it doesn't clack. But it looks silly, it looks bright white against this black background. Now what I'm going to do, I'll peel this off. I'm going to get some black felt, hopefully. And there's the adjuster screws. So I'm going to move that solenoid that way a little bit. And before I do anything else, there's the bit I mustn't lose. I mustn't lose that spring. There's, whoa, so easily done. So there's the plunger, and I want more of the plunger inside the solenoid so that it acts more quickly when you apply electricity to it and also the spring pushes a bit more to make sure the mouth shuts more quickly. I will put that somewhere so that it can roll onto the carpet in visibility. Right, small screwdriver. Okay, small screwdriver. So what am I doing? I'm loosening it and moving it back a bit. The joy of 3D printing. Well, not always joy. I'm going to move it back about two millimeters just to start with. We'll see how that goes. There we are. Okay, I've trimmed off the sides where it rubbed against the washers because it's ever so slightly too large. I've got some little bits of white fluff off it, so to speak. And I have stuck a black piece of felt in here. I'm, I'm not gluing this in because it's a little bit loose now, but it means I can easily get to the solenoid should I need to and gravity will hold it down normally. So I'm going to reassemble it and see how we get on. Right, let's see how she gets on. Oh, that is, I think that, that is perfect. That's really quick and completely silent. It doesn't open too far, it opens reliably. Instantly I switch it on. Oh, that's really good, good news. So. What I need to do now is to put her, her neck back together. Well, I've got the neck back together, and I tell you what, after having struggled with this bit, lining everything up with a hex rod so many times, just drawing a little black line along the top, marking the gear tooth and then extending it, that made such a difference. Okay, let's try and control the mouth from the circuit electronically. So what I've done, I happen to have a load of TIP 121s which are Darlington pair transistors and they allow a very small voltage from something like this circuit or an Arduino to control much larger currents or a small current a much larger current from something like a solenoid when you switch a solenoid off you get back EMF which is a big spike because the solenoid doesn't want the magnetism to stop it wants it to go on and on so it sends a huge reverse spike of electricity that can damage components attached to it. So you put a diode, it's a bog standard diode, 1N401 I think, and the wrong way across the solenoid. So as you switch it off, a big spike happens and it just gets shorted up by the diode. So if we switch this on, this is the circuit, you can forget about all this. All I'm going to do is I've got the... Donington transistor, Donington pair, and that is switching this side of the, should be connecting this side of the solenoid down to 0 volts when I apply voltage to this. So let's do that. Right, I'll show you what effect that has. There. Now that is not opening enough. I'll just connect it, well, I'll show you what happens when you connect it straight across the power supply. Yeah, you can see it only opens about half as much and is drawing 320 milliamps, so it's losing about 80 milliamps. And that's because these have about 1.5 volt uh, drop across them. So I'm running it from 5 volts, but the solenoid is only getting 3.5 volts, if maths is correct. Right, I'll look at an alternative, an illustration you say, right, well you've got plus 5 volts and you've got 
nut bolts like that. You've got the solenoid connected to that. Down here you've got the Donington pair which, oh I'm trying to remember what the circuit sim diagram is, it's something like that or possibly not. That comes down to here. So the idea is, and you have a resistor here to limit the amount of current that flows through the Darlington pair. So, if this is connected to 0 volts or logic low from the um, Arduino, there's no electricity flowing through the base. Oh, yeah, by the way, that's the base collector and emitter. So, nothing happens. But if you connect this up to um, plus 5 volts, current can electricity can flow through the base out of the emitter down to ground and then the transistor switch on and then electricity can flow through the solenoid so that's the principle of operation but like I say there is a one and a half volt drop across these by the Darlington pair so it's no good so what I could do is to actually connect the solenoid to a higher voltage 6.5 volts, forget about that. That means that when this switch is on, I've got six, uh, five volts flowing through the solenoid. Anyway, let's have a think. Brilliant. I was rummaging through my collection of transistors and such like and found an IRF 530 consulting the interweb. Um, I got the pinouts and these are slightly different type of transistors. They've got their connections called gate source drain and they're MOSFETs. And I put it in here and wired it up in exactly the same way. It's not a bit of a lot of spaghetti. Let's see if I'll make it a bit clearer. Well, it's there. And we have the diode, back EMF diode, connected to protect the circuit. And let's see, let me get her in shot. There we go. Now right, let's just connect it, see what happens. Yes, that is brilliant. Instant movement, completely silent. The Arduino can control this or the circuit, it's opening fully. And if you look at the current that she's drawing, the mouth is drawing. Oh, 370, 380 milliamps, which is what it was originally when connected straight across the power supply. I am really, really pleased about that. Like I said, I didn't want to use a, um, a, a relay, just simply because it's not very elegant. They clatter, they can wear out, and it's nice to keep everything. Look at that. This is so exciting. Right, I'm now going to connect that up to the output from this sound detecting circuit and we'll see what it actually looks like when we play the audio through. From your so point. we've got it wired up to the computer as an audio That provider. this is the correct juncture for you to partake in a cup of tea. I sincerely hope you gain immense pleasure from your brew. Now that's not bad at all considering that this is the correct juncture for you to partake in a cup of tea. I sincerely hope you gain immense pleasure from your brew. Now I can adjust it. I've put a field resistor potentiometer in so I can adjust how long this envelope lasts, so how quickly the LED, what was the LED, but now the mouth responds to changes in the audio. So let's, I'll leave that on her and I will fiddle. Let's see if we can adjust it. Let's, Your brew. Let's get this little screwdriver. That's so close. I I'm not going to inflict this on you. I'm going to fiddle around with brew. it and see if I can get it looking any better. You Considering how much simpler that is than having a whole Arduino dedicated to trying to analyse it, all the other complicated circuits, or the hours and hours spent analysing it, pre-processing it, just having a little circuit with um, with four little operational amplifiers on it, a variable resistor volume control in effect, so that a customer could adjust it up and down if they, you know, to get the mouth working as they like. I think that works really well. I'm really pleased with that. Yeah, 
I'll leave it at that and start working on getting her eyes and things moving and then if it bugs me at a later date I can always revisit it and see if I can overcomplicate it in the future. Excellent. Red juncture for you to partake in a cup of tea. I sincerely hope you gain immense pleasure from your brew. Thank you.